want to be in here while you're talking about this stuff like i don't want anyone reporting i was here while you're talking about this move or this this flipping um you know when you went and spun the block on this one or that one nah i don't want to be part of it they just pick themselves up and leave the room and go so go elsewhere or you just go home this happened plenty of times so i can't imagine somebody like a fugger who's infinitely more successful than anybody we have here in the uk to be doing you know something like what he's been accused of so i don't know man i feel i feel bad for the guy but i also feel like you know if he did the crime it's part of the punishment you have to face when you leave that kind of life of crime in it and you can't really be screaming free fucker if legitimately he gets hit with a life sentence like there is no free him it's gone man it's absolutely gone in that regard but hey what can you do so moving on i saw somebody commenting on this i think on the reddit and i also was thinking about it myself in general right and i was thinking this is well this goes out to a lot of the my viewers out there who are from the states i really want to hear your opinion on the chat about this i was thinking in general about everything that's going on with the whole jre extended universe right that i that i i coined the phrase the jre extended universe to describe all those people associated with joe rogan and whatnot i'm thinking in general right who from that crew of people the joe rogan extended universe is worth their price of admission who as a comedian would you be happy to spend 20 to a hundred dollars to go and see somewhere and trust with your night out and that's not including drinks or transport or your outfit or any sort of illicit class a material you want to take like that's just you paying a ticket to go who would you trust with 20 to a hundred dollars to go and see them perform because i legitimately can't think of many people in that group that i would be happy to pay money to see with the exception of Dave Vitell, who's not really JRE Extended Universe, maybe Bill Burr as well, and maybe Chappelle. But again, is Chappelle really JRE Extended Universe? Not really. But who in that immediate circle of groups of guys would you trust to see? They got a, got a flyer here, right? People are saying, what people here saying in the chat? People are saying Bill Burr, Harlan Willem, so people are saying here, probably Ari. Um, Uche saying probably seen most of them live. Oh, Shane Gillis is new one, the one under. Actually, Uche, for you, you've seen all of them all live. Who would you say has been the best one from you seen? Because I've only seen Chris D'Elia live, I think, from that group. When I went to LA ages ago, at Laugh Factory. And he was a lot better live than he is online. But it, I still wouldn't pay to see him again. And this is prior to the, you know, uh, the diddler allegations or whatnot. But he was much better live. But again, I wouldn't ever see him again. And that's the only person I saw, and I wasn't that impressed. But I can't think of any man like who legitimately would be worth the price of admission from this entire crew of guys. Like they're all kind of crap, which makes me think to myself, right? Maybe a real mark because for the longest time, Shane is above Jerry. Da, da, da. <sighs> yeah, for the longest time, Joe Rogan's had this kind of hold. Okay, which is saying the best were Bill Burr, Theo. Okay, Fear of Vaughn's a good one. I reckon he, I'd, I'd trust him with 20 to $100 of my of my money, for sure. i trust him. I think he'd put on a good show. Brad Williams. Is that Brad Williams, the um, the, the short guy, the small guy? What, what do you call it? The, how do you call it? What's the political correct term to call them? Uh, little people, little person. Is that Brad, is that, that Brad Williams? Dan Soda and Sam Muriel. Okay, cool. Sam Muriel seems like he'd make me go to sleep, but maybe he's going to be good. Dan Soda for sure I think it'd be funny but I'm thinking in general for the longest time Jerry or Joe Rogan essentially had a real stranglehold on the scene in terms of like you know if if he didn't stamp you then you weren't legit it felt like even though it's not the truth because if you actually listen to Jerry you know that he bigs up a lot of people in terms of comedy that he likes that he's never interviewed on the show or that he's probably never going to have on the show he's not really afraid to mention people special that he's watched that he's a big fan of but it felt like a lot of the people that you would imagine are successful or funny, they had to be friends with him, um, right? That's what you'd imagine. But I'm starting to think now, if you're actually looking for somebody funny to go and watch, it's actually more important that they aren't associated with Joe Rogan. Like, find somebody who hasn't been on JRE, find somebody who isn't part of the JRE Extended Universe, find somebody who wasn't a part of this old death squad, Remember how redacted that was, right? Death Squad. 
these guys legitimately thought they were murdering to the point where they called themselves the death squad of course rogan's in the middle right <laughs> right like that's probably what you'd go to say if you went to actually find somebody that you thought was legitimately funny and you went to support them try to find somebody who isn't associated with the rogan's because i can't think of many guys in that crew that are funny and a lot of it i reckon is the fault of podcasting weirdly enough podcasting has been very successful and lucrative for a lot of these guys and has basically extended a lot of their careers or given their them careers that they probably would never have had if they didn't have podcasts but i think it's also hampered their comedy because you get to listen to them a lot of the times on a podcast three times a week maybe more maybe less and you enjoy their humor on there you get used to a certain type of humor from them and then when you see them on the stage it's like who the hell is this person i remember that's the first thing i remember when i saw chris D'Elia special when i actually saw him in real life because i've listened to his podcast but again prior to this to the allegations when i was actually listened to his podcast or a fan of the 10 minute pod and a fan of him early days on the fire and a kid the first thing you notice when you see chris D'Elia perform live is his voice and his mannerism he starts that yeah he does that kind of like infantile like that kind of baby voice thing and he starts to he does his weird mannerisms this weird that like you never see him doing podcasts ever so it kind of really took me off it kind of threw me off a little bit like what is this whole thing and i think most comedians have that they have a stage voice that they suddenly kind of turn on when they get on there it's very very strange so that can be sometimes a you know a blessing and a curse because if i'm a podcast fan i look at it and i think that's not funny uh, and I'm definitely not going to see you perform again live, but I'm definitely going to support your pod. So you have two separate audiences. But in general, your comedy doesn't improve because most of your material, most of your thinking time and your real creative juices are being funneled into your, into your podcast. So I don't think, I can't think of many stand-ups nowadays who have better comedy specials than their podcasts. I can't think of many, legit. Even production-wise. Like they go all out for their pod. It's a great studio. It sounds amazing. It's always uploaded well. Like, I don't know, do you know what I mean? Like people put a lot of effort into their pods, more so than doing their specials these days, it feels like, especially with YouTube. Um, they just throw it up there as a piece of content to kind of get out there and get their name out there. But the irony of Death Squad featuring Brody Stevens, um, RIP to that guy. But yeah, I don't know. I just don't think there's many funny guys in that crew. It's just really strange. A whole crew of stand-up comedians who, you know, love to pontificate about the business of stand-up and go on and on and on about, you know, doing triple runs and doing opening mics and writing bits and specials and comedy politics. But when it comes down to the business of actually making you laugh in real life, these guys are not funny, really. Especially, again, the Joe R.E. extended universe type of people so it's making me think again Shane Gillis is another one who's an exception and also Mark Norman Ar Ari Shafi I never really liked prior but I think his recent special has definitely won me in terms of his ability to be trusted with my 20 to 100 dollars these three might be you know exceptions again like I said Dave Vitell, um people said Theo Vaughan Bill Burr there's a lot more associated have been on this pod they've been on the jury who I would never go and see or trust. Even Joe Rogan himself, would I want to pay $100 to go to hear him rant about monkeys in his comedy special? Or hump a stool or something? Or make some um, comedic point about something he spoke about on a podcast prior? I'm not going to do that. Because especially someone like him, he commits, he probably spends a lot, again, calculate the hours the amount of time that how, the, how long each GRE episode is you'd imagine he probably records way more GRE episodes than he's ever done sets or no especially nowadays considering how sex for he is he's probably not out there doing open mics all the time so I don't know I just find it very interesting that these guys just aren't the funniest really really aren't the funniest they like to act like they are and make it seem like it's all about the funnies but really them in IRL they're not really out there <laughs> you know making regular punters absolutely crease and feel like they got their money's worth by coming to see them play if anything coming to see them perform is like it's all like fan service you it stems doing fan, it's, it's them it's an opportunity for you if you're a fan of them as from their podcast to see them in real in person that's why i understand why a lot of people buy meet and greets to see comedians even though i would never do it 
I understand how people do do it because if you're a fan of this person, you want to see them in person, you want to get a picture, shake their hand, let them know how much of the show, the pod meant to you and whatnot, it's a good way because you're not going to see them too often, especially if you don't live in the same country as them. I get it. I understand that regard. But I know I was just thinking about it recently, just thinking like, who would I really trust with money? My hard earned squiller to go and see these people play and. I don't know. There's not a lot of them. What are people saying in chat about people? Who who are people rate here? I see people mentioning Godfrey, who's not associated with them. Uh, someone saying, "Bro, I just drove by a Brad Williams billboard in OKC. He was here like five months ago, and that shit was still up." Wow. Okay. Cool. See, um, serendipity there, isn't it? Big up Trico. I feel like Ari puts effort into his comedy life. Yeah, yeah. Ari puts in effort into the production of his comedy specials, but I think that's because, of course, he's a bit of a music head. He's into film. He's into festivals. He cares, and he, you know, he comes to um, what's that thing he goes to? He goes to that thing in Scotland, Fringe Festival. Um, that's obviously a big production. He's into showmanship type of stuff, so he actually does well in terms of production. I think he's actually an underrated producer. I'd actually love to see him produce someone special. Like, you know how other comedians help produce specials where they might pick out a venue, get a right director in, maybe even cut it or edit it themselves. I would actually like to see Irish Shafir produce someone special. Maybe you can produce Brendan's. Imagine Irish Shafir produce Brendan's next special and actually helped him with some of the jokes as well. That would be awesome. That would be an awesome way to really turn it around. Imagine that. Remember when Rogan gave Red Band the opposite of a speech she gave to Yeah, true. Um, I love to, yeah, yeah, Stavros, I love to see also. I had tickets to see Tom Zagrow, but I was out, of, but I was too hungover to go. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Uche knows, mate. The amount of, the amount of events I've missed out on from being too hungover, you will never know, mate. Oh my God. I, I, I was a serial ticket buyer of events and then, you know, you wake up the next day like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I'll take the I'll take the forty quid hit, um, but yeah, Tracy Morgan. People are saying some good. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. It's just my general impression. Looking for it, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. Who knows? Who cares? They're all doing way, way, way better than us anyway. So it doesn't really matter in that regard. And to be fair, I think a lot of them do use a bit of a cash grab anyway. That's a good way to kind of get some cold hard cash from your fans into your pockets and to keep it moving that way. <laughs> 